Uh, I'm from Jamaica, uh, although music isn't something I played when I was in Jamaica. I was very young. I left there when I was seven years old. Um, went back every year till I was 13. Moved from Jamaica to Brooklyn, New York. And in Brooklyn, New York, I went to Catholic school, so I spent my entire life dodging all the kids from public school. They were trying to beat up the kids from Catholic school, so uh, no time for music there. Um, but when I moved to Connecticut in high school, um, I got the bug for music, and particularly for guitar, by hearing a George Benson album. And I'd never really listened to jazz much, never really listened. To, you know, I was listening to rock and roll, to uh, reggae at the time, uh, R&B music. And I heard this George Benson album, and uh, it was the other side of Abbey Road. He did all the Beatles songs. And of course, I was familiar with the Beatles songs, but I never heard them done this way. And his fluency on the instrument just, I don't know, it just grabbed me. I was actually given the album by a friend of mine who hated it because he was into Creedence Clearwater Revival, and this was the total opposite of what he loved. So he said, hey, do you want this album? I said, sure, I'll take it, and um, kind of fell in love with the guitar ever since then.
Man, thank you so much. Music is, is what I call intellectual fun. It's music that um, I really spend a lot of time crafting and putting together, but it should sound like it's fun. It should be enjoyable to listen to. Uh, as one of the reviewers said for, uh, for the CD, which, who I think got it perfectly, it's what I like to call my music, smooth jazz with a brain.
started from LA. I started kind of late. You know, starting in high school is a late uh, start. You know, I was around um, 16. Um, and so I had a lot of friends who had been playing for years and they were pretty proficient and I felt I was way behind. So for me, the only way to catch up was uh, every waking moment I practiced. So school days, I would do three hours, three and a half hours. Uh, weekends, I'd do four, four and a half hours. Um, uh, and trying to get the proficiency, getting the fingers to work, learning the instrument, learning theory, because my guitar teacher was actually a classical guitarist, so he was teaching me Andres Segovia, he was teaching me all these other things, reading music and so on. And um, I'd say within about uh, two to three years, I felt I became not good, not proficient, but I was able to at least play the instrument.
this is really a jazz guitar. It's an arch top jazz guitar. An arch top means that the top of it kind of arches out a little bit. And it has holes in it like a violin. So it has what they call F holes like a violin. Um, <clears throat> It's set up so that it can get a nice acoustic sound, but it's actually an electric instrument. It's totally hollow, like an acoustic guitar, but it's electric, it has pickups. And this is a Gibson, um, Gibson L5. And the Gibson L5 is kind of an iconic guitar. Um, jazz players, since the beginning of jazz, have been playing Gibson L5s, L4s, L7s, and so on. And um, this one is kind of like the granddaddy of them all. It's the, the classic L5. Wes Montgomery, who is a guitarist that I love, played this instrument. And most of my adult life, I've always wanted one of these. I could never afford one of these, so I always bought, you know, a couple notches down from there. And um, about 20 years ago, um, I kind of, kind of lucked into this one uh, when I was doing a tour and I was out in Erie, Pennsylvania and uh, there was a gentleman there at a store and he happened to have you know this guitar sitting there and uh, he had seen me play at this place and said you should have this instrument and so I made that so. But it's a beautiful instrument, it has a very warm sound, um, has that kind of a natural sound. It's not a rock and roll guitar, you're not going to bend strings and do all that distortion. It just has that kind of warm, pretty, present sound to it and that's one of the reasons I love it.
And also there's another song on there that's quite interesting. It's called Nagoya Nights. It's a ballad. Um, I started writing that song over a year ago and um, got a, kind of a writer's block. Got halfway through the song, could not finish it. And uh, last year, in uh, 2012, I was in uh, Japan on tour uh, with, a, with a group, with a vocalist. And um, one of the nights I couldn't sleep, got up, um, figured I'd practice, and I started working on that song. And I actually finished writing the song. And so I decided to name it after the city that I was in, which was Nagoya, Japan. The album Get It While You Can, uh, it's been a labor of uh, a labor of love for the last year or so, working day and night on it. Um, my last CD, the one before this, If Time Stood Still, 
was mostly all my compositions, nine out of the ten songs I wrote, and that one did very well on the radio and did, did extremely well. And on this CD I decided I wanted to do a few tunes that weren't mine, uh, and actually some of the classic R&B songs that I loved so much before I got into jazz and George Benson and Segovia, um, but also do some of my own material. So I, I did uh, an Earth, Wind and Fire song on here, uh, Way of the World, which I'm going to do at, uh, at the concert, because um, I've always loved that song. It's one of my favorite songs. So I did an instrumental version of that. And th there's a, a, a lot of um, what I consider to be very, very great songs on there. The title cut, Get It While You Can, is the one that's on the radio right now, doing well, moving up the national charts. And that's just kind of a happy, you know, happy, kind of a smooth jazz moving song. It's got a horn section on it on the uh, CD.
so much. Thank you guys. Thanks. Well, I feel like my music, which obviously is mine, it's very personal, so of course I love it, and I would hope everyone else loves it too. But the way I write, I think is fairly accessible to the ear. You know, I find people in, in America are not really used to listening to instrumental music anymore. They, they need to have lyric. They need to have words to help them understand or even relate to the music. And I'm a guitarist, so obviously what I'm going to do is something that's related to an instrument, uh, uh, something that's melodic but instrumental. So I try to write instrumental songs that have a, a catchy melody, but I try to stay away from something that seems kind of mundane or, or foolish. Um, if I'm writing something and it sounds mundane to me, then I just stop and tear up the piece of paper and start all over again. I, I find that what I kind of sense my music as is it's music that is instrumental, it's music that is considered smooth jazz, but it, it's not cookie cutter. It's not music that uh, you know you, you sit in the room and you follow a formula and shazam you have uh, smooth jazz. It's, it's, it's what I find um, as one of the reviews I got on um, iTunes, the reviewer kind of said it's smooth jazz with a brain and I really love that part of the review because that's what I wanted to uh, impart. I wanted music that's Get your foot moving a little bit. It's got a groove to it. Um, uh, it shows off my ability, shows off my soloing, my improvisation, but also it has some s cement in there. There's something that's solid in it, and it's it's music that you can listen to and go, oh, I'm not losing brain cells while I'm listening to this. So that's really where I, I want my music to be, and I hope that people people really really feel that. Part.
Wallace on bass. Tim Fisher on piano. And thank you all so much for coming out. We're a great audience and we really, really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.